I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. I redeemed some of my... Uh, the thing that my company gives me in lieu of actually giving me bonuses. Yeah, which um, is fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, you know, the, like, the... the oh, you can redeem this for uh, one thing type thing yeah but it takes you like three years to accumulate enough to get one thing <laughs> um it's so, all intentional oh no it's it's inte- it's entirely intentional i hate it um but i redeemed mine finally oh nice and i got a 50 dollar uh e-shop card for the nintendo switch oh hell yeah yeah so i got two games nice with that uh, i'm I excited have, for paper mario have, that is coming out soon, isn't it? The origami, uh, whatever. Six days. It, it's like it's like a it's like the two D people got affected by the three D people, basically. Yeah. Or they're getting turned into three D people. <laughs> I, I, I'm in, I'm excited to see how that plot of that game goes. Um, so I picked up Star Wars Episode One Racer. Okay. Um, because I love that game. Yeah. And I've made it farther in that game than I ever did when I was a kid, which, uh surprised me considering i'm worse at video games now than i was before yeah um and i also got a game called graveyard keeper which is basically stardew valley but instead it's a totally inaccurate uh medieval graveyard simulator oh fantastic and it's very fun nice very very fun the uh um so a game that i was better at as a kid and i can't get anywhere near as far yeah. Is the Ninja Turtles on the uh, NES. Okay, so I have a hypothesis about NES games. Yes. Now, this is my thinking. The reason why you could get farther on an NES game back in the day is because there were less games. Right? So there were less games to play. And the fact of the matter is, you'd be willing to deal with the bullshit oh, of that's a harder true. game for longer. That, yeah. But now, now, unless the game is intentionally designed hard, so like your Risk of Rains, your uh, Celeste's, um, Hollow Knights, those types of games, right? Yeah. Dead Cells. If the game is not intentionally designed to be hard and you're not going into the game for a hard experience, um, you're more mad and you don't want to That's deal with that. very true. Because Ninja Turtles, it was like Dark Souls. Like, I can't even get to the, like, underwater, like, electrified seaweed level anymore. Like, I can't get that far anymore. Well, but the problem the problem isn't that it was... It's a hard game by design. It's a hard game by uh, development. Like, the the mechanics are poorly realized, and that's the problem. True. Um mainly the collision detection mechanics that's that's really the usually that's the thing that kills a lot of older games um yeah actually uh et the infamous atari 7200 i want to say mm-hmm. or was it 5200 i don't remember off the top of my head um i should remember that because it it nearly killed the games industry forever um an industry i am intimately involved in um gross but it's it is a little gross. I want to, I won't lie, um, <coughs> but so that game, the reason it failed uh, was because the like one of the main problems was the collision detection was poorly realized. Not to mention that like it was inscrutable how to play the game. Like yeah. it was very because it was like I think if my memory serves me, it was like programmed in like a week week or two. Or something like that. Like, some crazily short amount of time. Yeah. I, I don't know what was up with developers back in the day, but, man, they churned stuff out like it was nobody's business. Um, then again, uh, 
just a few pixels moving around on a screen was enough to make people happy. So you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, because Pong was a huge hit. Well, Pong, Pong is like Pong was the killer app, right? That yeah. was the thing that made people realize, oh, I can play a thing on my my uh, on my television, my console, on my TV. Yeah. Um, and it's it's a simplistic game. But it's not a bad game because at its core, it's just tennis or pong, ping pong, right? And and people like tennis and ping pong. Yeah, yeah. So it's 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 an abstraction of an existing cons a game that is already very popular. So, um, but it's also stupid easy to do because literally all you're doing is you have a box and a point. And you're doing a collision te- test between those two and applying a velocity vector against it. It's I could probably program Pong in about five minutes if I wanted yeah. to. So, um, a, a game that I've been playing a lot recently, which yeah. is so much fun, is uh, a game called AI Dungeon, where it's basically uh, D and D, but it's uh, uh, well, just a com- an AI making up the story. And also, you can turn off safe for work mode. Um, <laughs> so make sure you do that on every adventure. And it actually does surprisingly well. Stuff gets weird uh, when you start le- going outside of the fantasy stuff because I think they just fed it a bunch of fantasy books and it, and it kind of uh, develops yeah. the story. And it does really well. It got maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes into a story and it was doing pretty well. Um, so but is it Zork-like? Like in terms of like... It's all text-based, so you have say and do options. So you could say something or you could do something. And, okay. um there's quests um, that you get throughout the game, and you, it's really good at taking any information you give it. But then, over mm-hmm. time, it just doesn't like it'll drop something a little bit weird, and then it'll just make crazy shit happen, which is the most fun part. Because I, I was a rogue, so yeah. it, your quest is to learn, like, earn enough, steal enough, so that you can retire. And there's a number of values mm-hmm. assigned to that in the game, and they assign values to like whatever it is that you steal. So I figure I'll go steal from the king. Because he has a lot of stuff, and yes. this was after I failed a bunch of like small, smaller jobs and, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So a guard, guards see me, and I'm trying to evade the guards. And okay. then this is again a medieval high fantasy setting. And then the weird thing happens, and the weird thing is the guard calls for more guards on his radio. So now, <laughs> <laughs> now it just is the first time I, I went. Oh, it's about to break, isn't it? Like it, 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 I, I ran this AI as far as it can go, and it's it's it just showed the, uh, the, uh, the chink in its armor. So the guard radio is for more guards. Well, it's 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 uh, the magic radio. It's yeah. not it's not a. D- don't take what the AI says as literal. Yeah. yeah. So I, I I duck into this room, and mm-hmm. um, it's describing the room, and it does very well. And of course, there's a green vial, so I. No, it was, it. it was a syringe with green fluid. So, of course, I used the do action of um, inject syringe. Yeah, so, no, so, that's that's what you should do. So, like, you feel a little bit weird, nothing, but but I can't figure out what it does. And then eventually, the mm-hmm. AI just drops, uh, like, it's like, oh, you, it's like, it's describing a scene of guards coming, and then it th- adds that I become aware that I think I can control the guards with my mind. I mean, that's not that's not outside of a fantasy setting. That's um, that's, that's uh, not that is psionics. Not. But it's that's psionics. It's they do a cyberpunk whatever. stuff too. But it, it went from like okay, because I was just a rogue before, and now the guards have radios, and I have mind control. And this is over the course of just like two actions, and it was doing perfectly well. So like b- before that, um, well, and I, so, I think it's still doing perfectly well based on your description. Yeah, to me, well, but I, you know I, I, this. I, I kill the this, world with my mind powers. <laughs> like, yeah, so, this this yeah. doesn't sound too far off from a campaign that I would run. Let's be yeah. real. And then just for fun, I did uh, the zombie one. And uh-huh. it, it's clear that, at least in the one instance, it it was having trouble differentiating between the word zombie and boy. <laughs> and, and so uh, it was just this... It, I was having a very cyclical con- conversation with some woman whose child was either in the other room... Being she, zombified or a like, boy? It, the, like, is it a zombie or is it a boy? This is Schrodinger's boy. 
Like, <laughs> and, and I couldn't figure out how to open the fucking door. <laughs> like, it, it's like, in a super. It's, it's it's in the superposition of states between of zombie being... and boy. <laughs> yeah. So which which is a it, that's not a that's not a uh, that's not a logical fallacy or any kind of um, paradox. No. That they are not mutually exclusive. <laughs> they are not. So at least in this one instance of, of the, 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 the game, I decide, well, let's see how it just handles with me making outrageous claims. Like, can I just will things into existence? Or will the game try to, like, do something to justify that? Or does it just say no? So zombie or boys in the room, I decide, fuck that, fuck that lady. This isn't a supermarket. So I say, um, and there's zombies outside, I say, I get in my Iron Man suit. Okay. And, and I just want just to see what it does. And then the game says, I start to dismantle ve the vending machine and begin building. Like, so by me just <laughs> stating that I have one, it said, well, you can't just have it, but we will, we'll yes and this, and you'll start to build an Iron Man suit out of vending machine parts. Tony Stark made it in a cave. It's T Tony Stork. <laughs> It reveals your character's actual name. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, so I thought it was interesting how it, how it handled that, and uh, and then I uh, got bored and uh, started a garden, like a real garden or in the game. No, like a real one. I have squash now. Oh, okay, okay. <sighs> I got to do some trimming of my garden thingy. I don't really keep a garden. Lissa didn't plant one this year. Um, <laughs> mainly you just steal vegetables from your neighbors. Yeah. Well, no. Usually, usually we we do like a uh, flower garden type oh, okay. thing. Because like remember a couple years back, um, because we don't do in person D and D for obvious reasons. Um, uh, the um, the the, the she had like a like Elysiums and a bunch of stuff like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, we just haven't done it this year. Um, oh, nice. Mainly because, mainly because uh, buying plants can be difficult. Yeah, well, it's it's more the stores well, that sell you the plants. Yes, it was difficult to acquire plants this year. Yeah. Um, during the season that it would have been best to plant the plants. Yeah. To be fair, I did not acquire my own plants. When I knew someone was at a plant selling store, I said, "Hey, can you grab me some some?" Because uh, I was like, I, "I'm not going there." I mean, that's that's honestly uh, grouping trips is probably a better way of handling it than not. Yeah. <laughs> like. And uh, oh, I also got a pool now. Not like a, a pool. Not like, like a, a full pool, but like a uh, like an adult inflatable kiddie pool where you just like press the button. It's bigger than I thought. It's um. How it's deep? A, it's it's um it could get three feet deep i think but if i put it on a level spot mm -hmm. not a like kind of a little bit i have to move, adjust its position spot and it's about yeah one and a third brandon's long and one brandon wide <laughs> all right so that's about so i, I can just full on it's float about, in it. it it's about six by nine roughly yeah yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> i'm putting this into perspective for people who uh don't know your height <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, it's big enough for like several it's people to just cubits. float around and uh drink it yeah it's uh it's a, a furlong and three uh hamster testicles <laughs> Oh, that's such an arbitrary number because I have seen hamsters with every size of testicle. That, oh, and that's why the uh, you're not allowed in Petco anymore. Um, but interestingly, that's actually a really good segue into this episode. Oh, nice. Um, first, I want to say sorry for missing last time. Uh, shit happened, and I was trying to do something special. Uh, but. I had a panic attack about doing that special thing because I felt like I couldn't do it right. So uh, it didn't happen. Um, that's the reason why Brandon and I talked about the potential idea that I was going to do. I'm not going to talk about it because it still might happen, question mark. Um, but uh, 
our schedule is conflicted and we're back on track now though yep. so that's that's all you need to know um but anywho uh this is cryptopedia we talk about stuff uh mostly mostly cryptids well cryptids is the through line i should say <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Thus far, it's been um, almost exclusively cryptids. Yes. Um, well, cryptids and paranormal like events. Paranormal and like folklore. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And uh, this week's subject uh, was first cited in 600 to 759 CE. So 600 CE. 759 okay. that's when it was first recorded in writing that's um, old but it's possibly older um i couldn't find any proof of it being older than that point uh but some people said that it might be older than that so you know it, it, it's one of those things where it's like i i'm going to acknowledge that some people might believe that it's older but i don't have proof that it's older um, for my research. Yeah, so I, I'm not cheating. I just don't know what happened in the year 600. So I just Googled 600, like, to see what happened. Yeah. Uh, and that just didn't help. Um, oh, oh, it's not going to help you at all. Well, the, the, the next two bits are going to help you more. Uh, it says something about the Cambodian kingdom of Funan, which I don't have context for. Um, it was a leap year starting on Friday, so I know that. Thank you, Wikipedia. Well, it technically wasn't a leap year because the... Uh, it, it if uh, it's not a leap year if you're not using the Greco-Roman calendar. Yeah, Rome so. is part of the Byzantine Empire still. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not it, it's actually it 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 would be a leap year by our standards, but I don't yeah. think it's technically a leap year. Um. Anywho, let me continue giving you the uh what it could possibly be. Sure. Um. It so that puts it so the thing that. Looking it up, the thing that would have been more useful for you would be to know that it was in the Nara period. I don't know. Who, who is Nara? Oh, okay. So I would have known that, but I guess that's because I'm I'm what I am. Um, the taxonomy is Canada, and its region is Japan. Okay, so Canada, is that... Um, what, 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 what? That uh, is a what? It's the... Um, family i want to say or is it the genus uh family it's the family of dogs foxes that dogs. Okay. all that stuff um so, so it's it's the Japanese super group. dog yep here's the thing i know it's a japanese dog and we talked about um hamster testicles and you said mm -hmm. perfect segue yep so this is japan Yep. This is a you cryptid. Should... This is a canine. This is a dog that eats testicles. Brandon, this is you should get this one. This is like This is a dog that eats uh, testicles. This is one of my favorite creatures of folklore. Or or is it a dog right so so when um I'll give you one with, with like the aswang and stuff like that when it, when they steal penises that's really like it that that means erectile dysfunction. So is this some kind of like Japanese dog <sighs> monster that's really it doesn't literally eat testicles but it's when people like have ED they say like oh the um the 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 naro dog stole my testicles. <sighs> okay, I'm going to give you two more hints. Okay. One, it has nothing to do with sexuality whatsoever. It is not a sexual being in any way, shape, or form. Um, two, it was featured in a Studio Ghibli movie. It okay. So let me be that guy and be like, I've only seen Totoro. Mm -hmm. Wh uh, what? I've only seen to Totoro. You really have only okay. You've definitely got to at least. There's more that I want. What's the one with no face? I want to watch the one with no face. Uh, that's Spirited Away. Yeah, you I, need to watch this one. I have. I literally have the Blu-ray for this one right next to me. Princess Mononoke. It's called Princess Mononoke, and it's my favorite personally. Um, um, it's not. This is not. This is not the. There's a wolf in this one, but this is not the movie that. Okay. That uh, it's so, related so to. So because it's. All right, hamster testicles, dog, non-sexual. The monster is a dog with no testicles. 
Brandon, this week's episode is a tanuki. Oh, like tanuki suit uh, Mario. Yeah, we're, we'll get into that, but th- this week's episode is a tanuki. I always thought that just means I thought that just meant like raccoon. No, no, absolutely not. It's it's a totally different thing. Well, I thought tanuki w- suit was w- like raccoon suit Mario. Okay, so we'll get into that when we get to the the part where I'm talking about pop culture, because um, there is something. The, the tanuki suit is a thing. We'll, we'll talk about the tanuki suit. Don't worry. Is it like a sex thing? Mm-mm. Like I said, literally nothing about the tanuki is sexual whatsoever. But if the there tanuki n- suit's a thing, it not furry. This is gonna go a little furry. Ah, uh, <laughs> gotcha. Um, so I'm gonna say that this week's episode is probably a cryptopedia first, or at least a me first. Okay. Um, in that the creature we're covering is not, nor has it ever been considered a cryptid. Well, what we're talking. Is it a spirit? Well, no. It's it's kind of. Um, it's a yokai. Well, I'll get into oh, the definition yeah, 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 of that in yeah. a second. I'm down with we, yokai. We've talked about yokai before. Yokai uh, watch all the way, baby. Yeah, well, no. We'll talk about... I'll talk about that in a little more detail because I actually... Exp- I, I revisit what yokai is. So let's let us let that happen in the telling of the tale. Um, so I get it. Brandon, tail, like raccoon tail. Well, it's not a raccoon. Have you ever seen a tanuki in real life? You Actually, no, wait. I can guarantee you have never seen a tanuki in real life. I can actually guarantee that. Yeah, because they they're 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 not a, they're they're not they're non corporeal. No, they're they're a real animal. But I can guarantee you've never seen them in real life because the fact of the matter is they're very rarely uh, shown in zoos. Um, so let's let's just get into the the context. So the tanuki is in fact a real animal, also known as the Japanese raccoon dog. The species is endemic oh. to Japan and a subspecies of the Asian raccoon dog. Despite oh. visual similarities to raccoons, tanuki are without a doubt more closely related to dogs. In terms of scientific classification, it's in the family Canidae and exists as the only species of the ge- genus Nycterudes. I'll buy it. Ship it. Yeah. You did it. And nice, they don't nice have testicles. They do. No. Um, they are predominantly nocturnal, and both their vocalizations and intimidation part- postures, arcing their back, resemble cats. So they're like a kind of cat-like dog in that regard. Cat dog um, raccoon. They have been known to be seen during the day, so it's not like... They're not like a raccoon, where if you see a raccoon during the day, it's like, kill that thing. Yeah. Um, it's more like, it sometimes is just awake during the day. It's, it's mm. fine. Um, they are omnivorous. They climb trees and mate for life. The Tanuki's primary predator is wolves in its natural habitat. Although in Japan, it appears that a new nemesis is the car. <laughs> With conservative <laughs> estimates placing their death toll near 370,000 per year. <laughs> uh, I'm just picturing a, a car like slowly rolling through the woods looking for Tanuki. <laughs> <laughs> It's on the prowl. Um, I mean, like, for what it's worth, uh, Japan is not exactly a, a nation with car culture either. Um, True. Yeah. So, like, like U.S., we would say, is a car culture nation, right? Um, because everyone, especially in the area we live, you need a car to survive. Japan, less so. It, it's more, um, it, it's actually really expensive to drive a car in Japan. Um Believe it or not, uh, there's like a lot of there's a lot of taxes and stuff because they're like literally constantly repaving the roads. Um, but that's a whole other thing, and I don't have any research on that to prove that. I've just seen some stuff on it in the past. Um, but for three hundred and seventy thousand tanukis to be killed a year, <laughs> that's a that's a that's massacre. A number. That's a number, because that's a thousand dead Tanuki a day, basically. Yeah, that's something where, where if someone hasn't, someone is going to find some way to capitalize on Tanuki corpses. Well, we're going to get into that, actually. <laughs> Are we? Yeah. Oh, uh, fantastic. Well, not specific to the Tanuki, raccoon dogs are 
as a species considered to be invasive and nuisances, and generally they're legal to kill for agricultural agricultural purposes. Least concerns because they're they're like they breed like crazy. Apparently, are they delicious? Um, I don't know if they're delicious. I know that they ended up in European nations as well because okay. that's just how the, this this stuff goes. Is like because it's beginning um, to sound a little bit like um, rabbit almost or like duck. Where like there you, you can just hunt and eat them. I don't know if people eat them so much. They I might do be know, delicious. however. I mean, they're, they're cute, and cute things have a higher taste factor. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Um, so, <laughs> I do know, however, that their fur is used quite a bit. Ah, uh, okay. So, impressively, the raccoon dog has been at the center of several scandals in which their fur was me- misrepresented as artificial fur. Wait, so it's real fake? Like, it, it's there, it's being sold as fake, but it's real? <laughs> yes. There, I found on the Wikipedia page at least... Four, five, four instances in which this happened. Okay. Uh, in 2006, label Sean John had unknowingly been using raccoon dog fur as faux fur. <laughs> Fantastic. In 2008, the Humane Society of the United States filed an FTC false advertising complaint that 20 retailers have been ris- mislabeling raccoon dog fur as faux or even other animals, including coyote, which is <laughs> what? <laughs> Who oh. wants coyote fur? Probably someone who in California who's mad at coyotes. Uh, probably all them road runners. Yeah, Dan. I bet Dan Harmon would. A coyote attacked this dog. Oh, uh, he probably would. He he'd be down for that coyote fur. Like he'd jacket. probably be mad if he found out it was a raccoon dog, though. Yeah. Um. In 2013, Neiman Marcus, Doctor J's, and Eminent had rep- misrepresented raccoon dog fur as faux. And then in 2014, uh, the Humane Society of the United States once again announced that Kohl's was selling raccoon dog fur as faux fur. What? Yeah. So apparently, apparently their fur is, uh, they're, they're, they're used because they're such a nuisance species. Like someone <laughs> really did capitalize on just Tanuki bot, like corpses, and it's to yes. sell them as fake Yes. Someone has Uh, literally... It's not specifically Tanookies, but raccoon dogs in general. I mean, Um, is it possible that, um, like, another name for the Tanooki in Japan is Fo? So they really are selling Fo fur, but it's being misunderstood? Well, this is probably in in China that this is happening. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm most gonna of these... discover a new animal and call it the faux in, in foe. And Good it's luck. Really confused some people. Good luck finding a mammal and name it the foe. Naming it the foe. Yeah, it's the bipedal cat with human teeth. Uh, anywho, this is not the focus of the episode. Um, as some of you may already know, the tanuki is famous in Japanese folklore for its representation as a shapeshifter, alongside foxes and badgers. And at least foxes are going to get their own episodes. Don't, don't don't worry about that. That that's been on my docket for a long time. I have a book that I've been trying to read, but I think the guy might have a thing for Kitsune, so it's a little hard to read. <laughs> um, he gets a little too descriptive for no reason. He also refers to the Kitsune as her a lot, um, uh, which is which is fair because um, what is it, uh, Lady? Dogweed or whatever the mo- like the or, the originating point of the Tanuki uh, not Tanuki the Kitsune lore is is female and there's like the whole thing that ha- exists in Korean folklore where the the um, the Kitsune are basically stealing lives so they can become human which is what Ari's based a lot off of and all that kind of stuff but um, another episode another episode definitely happening but it's another episode. So, in Japanese folklore, the tanuki is frequently associated with a type of yokai known as the bake tanuki, which, based on my Googling, more or less means shape-shifting slash monstrous raccoon dog. Um, so, there's another yokai known, na- known as the bake neko, which is just monstrous neko. 
not monstrous okay. cat. Yeah. Wow. Good good translation, John. Using yeah. the yeah. original I know you word might. in there. Mostly from yeah. uh, Nekobuso. Nekobuso? Yeah. <laughs> I still have that it's one such... in the display case where I replaced the Gundam body with the uh, the cat in a, a litter box. Oh, uh, for some reason, okay. I feel really dumb. So oh. I'm going to reveal something uh, that's horrifying to me. Yes. So when you said Nekobuso, yeah. my mind didn't jump to the amazing line of model kits, which involve a cat in a box with basically Gundam parts attached to it. My mind jumped to Nekopara. Oh, let me do a Google. Um, don't ma- make sure that safe sh- search is off. Yeah, I'll make sure I'm not on company VPN. <laughs> yeah, actually, no, do, do. Um, <laughs> so Nekopara is a dating sim uh, oh. in which you're dating Oh, they're all cat cats. girls. Yeah, um, they're like literal cats, by the way. They're not just cat girls. They're literal cats that are humanoid. Um, oh. Yeah, their ages... There's a girl in a box. Yeah, uh, so their ages are actually reflective of cat ages. What's so that they're mean? not. That means that they're not like 20 or 18. Oh, they're like three. They're like, they're like three and seven months. So, oh boy, according to noisypixel.net, Neko Parra series has sold over 3 million copies on Steam alone. Yeah. And that the, was the as ma- of April 14th of this year. The main girl is nine months old. <laughs> <laughs> she looks like a, she looks like an adult, kind of, but she's nine months old, technically, because she's a cat. Uh. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and there are uh, our 18 scenes in those. Uh, yeah, there's some there's some raunchy CGs from those games. Just as a heads up. Oh, um, I bet. Yeah, so if you're if you want some some quality 18 plus adult only content involving nine month old cat girls that don't look like they're nine months, uh, there you go. I think one of them is a Maine Coon. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what does that say? I squirted Chocola and Vanilla's faces with Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's that's pretty much the, the series. Oh, jeez. Um, there's an anime of it, too. Yeah. Oh, there's some, like, really high-quality uh, figures. Um, like, like... The, like the fancy vinyl figures yeah I don't want to go down the dark rabbit holes of things I know about uh, cast off figures and things like that because oh. th- that's going to be a whole episode and um, I don't think anyone wants to hear about the horrifying world of PVC anime figures oh yeah yeah I'm let's just say there's a term that's used and that term is hot glue. Anywho, uh, <laughs> since it's been a while since we covered a yokai, episode nine was the last time with Kappa. Um, as a refresher, a yokai is more or less a catch-all term for Japanese monsters, spirits, and demons. It should be noted, however, Western ghosts would not be considered yokai. Um, rather, they would be considered something more along the lines of a yure. Uh, and for the sake of simplicity for the remainder of the episode we're going to be referring to the tanuki as we're going to be using tanuki to refer to the folkloric entity not the literal raccoon dog um and not the back it the bake tanuki because bake tanuki is going to screw me up and i'm going to say something stupid (laughs) um but tanuki i can say very easily because i've been saying it for probably 20 years now (laughs) yeah (laughs) (laughs) um so in folklore the tanuki is often regarded as a buffoon or a clown uh with a penchant for music and competition that being said they are adept shapeshifters and through the use of their huge scrotum 
more on that uh, later. Uh, which, well, that, that, they use that for their transformation, typically. For, sh- um, for their shape-shifting. I also use my yeah. scrotum for my shape-shifting. I do, too. <laughs> um, and that being said, they're capable of near unspeakable cruelty, which we'll get into in one of the examples. Nice. Uh, Wikipedia asserts that the Tanuki was deified prior to the arrival of Buddhism. However, I couldn't find any concrete evidence support support this fact, and Shinto deification is a lot different than uh, the way that we look at deification. So just keep that in mind. Um, something becoming a local god is different to the Shinto mythos and the Shinto uh, dogma. Um, it's more nature worship more spiritual worship uh kami imbues things it's mm-hmm. it's it's more complicated and it's a whole episode not on this podcast because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this that would be a religion podcast and that's not what we are um really actually it's really actually a fascinating religion and it's kind of cool because it's a um polytheistic religion obviously um so it naturally integrated buddhism and christianity like seamlessly and it has no no problems integrating both of those together with its existing religion it's 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 fascinating to me how polytheistic religions are more um malleable by nature like hinduism and things along those lines there there it's 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 really cool that's that's all i'm gonna say um total aside (laughs) in tanuki lore there are three particular there are three in particular that stand out Danzaburu Tanuki, Shibiman Tanuki, and Yashima no Hage Tanuki. Are Sometimes, these three specific Tanuki or three types of Tanuki? They are three specific Tanuki. Okay. The Tanuki is a catch all term. All the Tanuki basically Tanuki is a thing. There's not like there's not like classifications of Tanuki. They are all Tanuki. They're all Bake Tanuki. It's okay. a it's they're they're a spirit that um, has the ability to shapeshift, generally jovial, a uh, little mischievous, and there's other qualities which we'll get into when we tell the stories of the individual, like, famous Tanuki. Um, but they're the three famous Tanuki of Japan. Okay. Um, so they're the ones that, like, have... They're, they're the ones that are, like, local... They're deified in local shrines for what... Okay. What? Like, like, like it's... They're... Yeah. yeah. Um... As far as I can tell, the three stories that we're about to talk about, uh, three characters we're about to talk about, they originate from the Edo period of Japan, um, which is, for those of you who don't know, is a period of isolation in Japan. Um, I think the Dutch were the only people who were allowed to communicate with the Japanese during this time period. Um, It's pre-Meji Restoration, uh, pre-World War II. So this is like... I want to say, like, I, I, if my memory is correct, I'm, I'm about to say something without looking it up. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so the Edo period is from 1603 to 1868. So it's like a, it's like a roughly 300-year period of Japanese history. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of, like, the classical Japanese artwork that you know or you've seen like the woodblock printings comes from this period. Um, Just to kind of give you an idea. Um, So uh, let's start with Danzaburo Tanuki. Now, Danzaburo was the leader of the Tanuki on Sado Island, known for his munificence and trickster ways. In most of his stories, Danzaburo is a trickster. Many of the most infamous pranks played by Tanuki have been attributed to him, disguising leaves as gold to sell for real money. This is why Animal Crossing items are leaves, by the uh, way. Uh, using mirages to fool pedestrians and block pedestrians with illusory walls. So basically they're using their shape-shifting and abilities to create illusions to mess with people. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a very common trend in Tanukis. Also... Um, there's one story about them like banging on their stomachs and it's like pompoco pompoco is the way that they yeah. describe it so it's like the onomatopoeia um i don't know if i i touch on that in here i forget because i wrote this like two weeks ago uh but whatever 
Um, so that being said, Danzaburo was a fairly generous Tanuki with his money. Uh, he ran what could be effectively considered to be a bank out of his den. Uh, humans who wished to borrow money from him would leave a note outside his den with an amount and a date of repayment. If Danzaburo approved the loan, the money would be waiting the next day. Danzaburo never charged interest on the loans. To the Tanuki, fairness and honesty were qualities that were essential. In contrast to their trickster ways, so there's like kind of a dichotomy that exists in the Tanuki. It's like a uh, give and take because yeah. they're they're tricksters, but they really believe in honor and they believe in like if you say something, you hold you hold up your end of the bargain, basically. So what happens if you are approved for the loan, take the money, but don't pay it back? We'll get into that. Ah, okay. I'm excited. Mm-hmm. I hope it's fucked up. It's less fucked up than you think. Oh. Um. Basically, if uh, actually we won't get into that because for whatever reason I didn't write it down. Um. So basically, what would happen is if you don't pay them back, the Tanuki would not lend you loans anymore. Oh. And it would stop lending loans to people. Like, if the Tanuki gets burned too many times, he'll he'll cool on lending loans. Just hoping that there'd be a bit more draw and quartering. Uh, no, the Tanuki, there's only a couple of stories in which Tanuki are violent. And the stories in which they're violent, they're incredibly violent. Nice. But for the for the most part, they're they're more just trickster okay. spirits than anything else. Um, it is said that Danzaburo would take money from humans. However, he would always leave a promissory note with the victim's name and repayment date, to which... The victim uh, would always get their money returned. So they always got the money back on that date. If Danzaburo took money from you, you always got that money back. Um, That being said, he did do some unscrupulous things like selling leaves as gold to get money to build up his funds. So the the money wasn't exactly clean. Like, yeah, don't get me wrong. He's the OG money launderer. -er. Yeah. Yeah. He's literally laundering money. Uh, He's laundering leaves, typically. Yes. Um, but hey, you don't know. Those might be some yummy leaves. They might be delicious. They might be so delicious. So what would happen? Like, would you just go to bed, and the next day you wake up, and that gold bar is just a leaf on your it, TV stand? Um, It's it's kind of like... Uh, there, there's, there's, like, other stories like this in Western mythology where, like you get paid in gold and it, it turns into stones or something like that. Oh, like, I, think, I heard about like straw. Yeah. Yeah. So like Rumpel Stiltskin yeah. type thing. Okay. Oh, that's different. That's different. He's that was spinning straw into gold. R- regardless. Um, the idea is you would have the gold and then at some point afterwards it would turn into leaves. Cause okay. you've been tricked. You've been had. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's a fairly common trickster mythology in cultures that have, um, monetary systems. Yeah. Um. It, it's it's just basically it's a metaphor for um. <coughs> it's a metaphor for getting screwed over on a deal. Mm-hmm. That's really all it is. It's 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 a, a bad batch of apples or you know uh, something along those lines. So, in one story, uh, Danzaburo seeks medical attention from a human in the in human form from a local doctor. The doctor treated the Tanuki and upon learning his name refused payment in the form of a plate of money. The doctor's refusal was due to the fact that he wanted money earned in a good and honest way. In pursuit of fairness, as Danzaburo had been healed by the doctor, he returned with a sword to give the doctor, which the doctor accepted. Really not sure what the moral of that story is. (laughs) Yeah, I I think the moral is more on the doctor. I don't think you learn anything from Denzaboro. Uh, yeah, so because because here's the thing: the sword is still probably purchased through illicit means. So yeah, I I, I don't know. Um, there was in a, in the book that I read for this, there was talking. They were talking about like um. So that might have been to like extol the virtues of traditional medicine versus non-traditional medicine because the doctor was a traditional practitioner of Japanese medicine. Um, and then in another story, someone who's practicing Western medicine basically gets screwed by the Tanuki and all that kind of stuff. Um, I, I didn't bother putting it in here cause it wasn't really, 
that's more of a commentary that's more of a story that's storytelling that's commentary on their society in the trends of the Edo period um and I didn't really want to go into a whole lot of detail about the Edo period because that's like honestly just talking about how stories and mythology represent different periods of time you can pretty much do a podcast series on that um <laughs> like this is more of an overview of what the Tanuki is. And uh, I think that would have gone way, way overboard and way, way into the deep end. Um, that being said, Danzaburo is also credited with the prevention of Kitsune on Sato Island. Uh, I could find two tellings of this particular tale, both of which involve the Tanuki tricking a Kitsune into getting killed. <laughs> in one instance, Danzaburo convinces the, the Kitsune to turn into a hat so Danzaburo could smuggle it to Sato Island. Halfway through the journey, Danzaburo murders the Kitsune in cold blood oh, and throws fantastic. it into the sea. Uh, as such, the Kitsune were scared off from traveling to Sato. In the second telling... Danzaburo tricks Kitsune into thinking that he can turn into the Diamo's procession. This gets the Kitsune killed when the actual procession shows up and they reveal themselves to the humans. <laughs> Interestingly, uh, the latter of these tales match closely with another tale between a nameless Tanuki and Kitsune. However, the roles are reversed. So, um, for those of you who don't know, the Diamo's procession is basically a bunch of nobility um, in the Edo period. So effectively, what happened was Dansborough's like, "Oh, let's uh, let's have a contest in which we we prove our shape shifting abilities," and um, the Kitsune does one thing, and then Dansborough says, "I'll turn into the da the Diamo's procession," but he knew that the the Diamo's procession, the group of feudal lords, were coming, so he said he'll turn into them, and then instead the real thing comes by and kills him. Um. Keep that in mind because that becomes a recurring theme in Tanuki stories. <laughs> that particular tale. Um, that being said, uh, due to his reported munificence and possibly his eradication of K Kitsune from the island, because um, generally Kitsune are more malicious in their stories, uh, it's said that Danzaburo was deified as a guardian spirit on Aikawa, Aikawa uh, in Aikawa on Sato Island. Okay. For for now, protecting the island. Yeah, basically. He he Gotcha. He um he 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 was deified because he was like a, you know, peasants got money from him and he protected the islanders and it's, it's one of those things. Also generally uh they like to um the the it, it typically bit Beneficent, benevolent spirits in, um, and actually malevolent spirits get deified frequently, um, either through appease, and basically you're appeasing them in both cases. In one case, to continue to be benevolent, in the other case, to not be malevolent. Um, oh, okay. I, I think, I don't know, I didn't look into that. Don't quote me on that. That might be wrong. Look it up yourself. <laughs> uh, this is about Tanookis. That's our next shirt. Don't quote me on that, John. Don't quote me on that. It's a quote of you saying, don't quote me. <laughs> yes. That's our third shirt. I don't remember what the second one was, but the first one's Jeff. Uh, so, Danzaburo was tricked by a peasant in a bizarre story that led to him never tricking humans again. And I'm mentioning this. You'll find out why. So, I'm going to just quote this directly from a source that I got. Uh, the source was uh this is this is i think pulled from the wikipedia page this telling of it um so danzaburo found a young peasant and to trick him he disguised himself as a young woman and pretended to be in a poor state of health the young peasant called out and danzaburo replied i can't move because of my stomach ache the peasant thus took responsibility for sending the woman but he somehow had a hunch that it was danzaburo and tied the woman up with rope. Why? The peasant answered, That's not how you treat a sick lady. The peasant answered to the startled Danzaburo, it's so you won't slide off. Danzaburo, feeling a sense of danger, desperately pleaded, let me off. The peasant asked, even though you're in bad health, why do you want to get off? 
and did not let Danzaburo off. And Danzaburo replied, I want to go pee. But the peasant laughed, if a beautiful girl like you will pee, I want to see it. Do it on my back. Why? <laughs> Why? That's not how you treat a sick lady. Well, uh, not even that. Uh, that's not how you treat a lady. Well, in general, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, some people like to I, be tied up and, and pee. I mean, that's... that's I, I don't... Yeah, yeah. But, but this in this case, it's the guy liking to tie her up and have her pee on him. It's it's. What I'm saying is weird stuff was in Japanese folklore, um, but the story continues. Uh, he did not let Dansboro off at all. Before long, they arrived at what was a peasant's house. Dansboro said, "Isn't this my home?" And the peasant said, "Dansboro, I know who you actually are," and harshly chastised the earnestly apologizing Dansboro. Ever since, Dansboro did not try fooling humans again. So. Basically, yeah. I don't know what the moral of this story is. It seems like a funny tale. Yeah. Um, that, that's really re- what it is. It was probably like a joke tale about him and about why he doesn't trick people anymore. But um, I should say this. Uh, some believe that Danzaburo was actually a human merchant who cared for and preserved Tanuki on Sado Island. He was well-respected by the people, and through the course of folklore, he himself became a Tanuki. The source of this is Japanese and from 1981, so I have no clue how accurate this is. I'm relying on someone's translation. Yeah, that's still kind of cool, though. Like, it, no, it, I, if I that have, last part's true. I honestly had the feeling that that's probably the case because this is this is basic. It's basically the same thing that happens in American folklore, right? Yeah, where um, an individual is raised up to a hero status, mm-hmm. like uh, Davy Crockett, for example. Yeah, like he's raised up to be a hero, but he probably was kind of an asshole. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it, he was a white guy in the, the West. He fought at the Alamo. If you fight at the Alamo, you're probably... Uh, yeah, you're, you're on the wrong side if you're fighting at the Alamo. I feel like that's going to be a controversial opinion. I don't think it is, though. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Oh, because they definitely, they definitely stole... It, 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 was, it was... They were stealing... It, they're stealing I'm only territory. Saying that might be, I'm only saying that might be a controversial opinion because we have Texas listeners. Oh. <laughs> and I don't know how they feel about the Alamo. Everybody knows that, like, th- this whole, like, what, we can't talk about anything French now because we, you know, we stole the whole, like, that one territory from, oh, no, because then the French took it from the Native Americans. We did all the shit we, we you know took. What? It's all, all, here, all here, been Here's spooked. the fact of the matter. Every, America exists as a parasite. Yeah. <laughs> America itself is a parasite on the land that it lives. Um and I don't think that's a con- I don't think that uh, that might be a controversial opinion, but it's fact. Yeah. <laughs> um anywho. So, moving on to Shibaman Tanuki. Um Shibaman Tanuki was said to hail from Iowa Island drumming his boon, his belly on moonlit nights and doing mostly harmless pl- pranks. Leaves into gold, you know, standard oh, nice. shtick. Um, he was well regarded by the people on the island for his kindness, and he guided lost villagers down the mountain when they were drunk. <laughs> How do you, it's hard to climb a mountain. Did, it's, it, there was a bar on top of a mountain is, is what that tells me because I don't drink and then decide I want to exercise. <laughs> So somewhere I, I there's I, a mountain with a bar on top. I think it was more of like there was a road in the mountain and they took a wrong turn type thing. Okay. Like like it's it, Japan is a very mountainous region. Um for cuz it's it's basically uh, if my memory's correct it's volcanic. Is it a volcanic island? I don't remember. Uh it might not be. Well, whatever. There's there's a lot of long story short. There's a lot of mountains in Japan, um, so you're not going to be able to go uh, most places in the countryside without encountering a mountain. My guess is people were drunk. They stumbled off the path, and this tanuki apparently saved them. Okay. In the folklore, um, as such, the tanuki was well liked by the locals, 
And if he helped you, it was customary to provide an offering of a one show sake bottle. I like how this guy barters. Yeah, he gets he gets yeah. the booze. I mean, you were drunk. He helped you. Let him get drunk. Yeah, that's how it works. Um, never mind. Uh, so, Shibuman and his wife, Omasu, which, can I just point out that in folklore, Japanese folklore, a wife is named, but... When I do cryptid stories, it's like pulling teeth to find the wi- the wife's name. Oh, yeah. Even if they're like a central character in the story. Mm. Like, it, it, it's it's ridiculous, but whatever. Uh, Shibuman and his wife, Omasu, had gone to see a play, Nazaka. Na- Nakaza. Nakaza in Naniwa, now Osaka, uh, disguised as humans. After sightseeing, the two had a contest to disguise disguises. The contest? To pre- pretend to be members of the Diamo's procession. <laughs> <laughs> Predictably, when it's Shibamon's turn to shapeshift, actual lords show up, and when Omasu re- reveals herself, they cut her down. Despondent, Shibamon was going to leave the city, but decided to at least see the play in memory of his wife. Turning leaves into gold, he entered the play. However... The presence of leaves in the in the like donation box tipped the theater staff off to the fact that there was a tanuki in the theater. When entering theater, a guard bro- a guard dog broke his disguise concentration ah. and he was chased down and killed because they had set up a, a guard dog because they didn't what? want a tanuki in if, the theater. If if, if 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 he's your guy that let's all your drunks get home safe then why is it just like murder hit like why do they just go straight to the murders well that's on iowa island not oh. naniwa so they're they're two different it's two different locations so he traveled to osaka for this okay um and he's not it's not his native city yeah so people don't know him mm. basically uh but whatever so a rumor passed to his home island, and the people were upset that their local tanuki had been killed. His belly drum was not heard on a moon a moonlit night. That was basically how they knew it was him. They, they'd hear him just like slap slapping the belly. Literally, yeah, yeah. Because they're they're like uh, they're jovial creatures yeah. in the folklore. Uh, the number of guests to the theater declined until the theater deified him through the Shibamon shrine. So basically, what happened was the populace said. That has the Tanuki's curse because you murdered a Tanuki, which that's a thing. Uh, also, Tanuki possession is a thing as well. I don't go into a whole lot because it's not really. Wait, that a Tanuki can become possessed or that they possess people? If a Tanuki has been killed, they can possess someone. So like as a vengeful spirit. Okay, so let's. You said that. Let's go back to that. What was it? Um, 370,000. A year? <laughs> That's a well, lot no, of no, vengeful no, no. spirits. Well, no. Not every Tanuki is a Baka Tanuki. Ah, uh, okay. So, so only Baka Tanuki are the... the oh, well, gotcha. Baka Tanuki. Because Baka Tanuki is a stupid Tanuki. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. praying at a shrine then became a common practice for actors as time went on. And like... Um, they've like reset up the shrine several times and it's still like a tradition to kind of pray at the shrine for actors um because he's like a he's like, basically he's like the pa- he's like a patron saint of of acting, acting. okay yeah. um and in Japan the acting tradition comes from uh kabuki theater and all that I don't I know approximate information about a lot of stuff. <laughs> Especially involving Japan because high school was a rough time for John. Um so of the three famous tanukis, the resources I could find for Yashima no Hage Tanuki were the sparsest. It appears that his primary claim to fame was that he was a protector of the Taira clan and later the protector deity of Yashima-ji, which is pictured above in the show notes. Um, His talent for disguise was regarded as the best of all the Tanuki. 
Some legends say he is still alive and known for his good deeds to this day. However, there in some legends, he was killed by a hunter or Shibaman Tanuki, our <laughs> previous friend. Ironically, in the latter case, Shibaman kills Yashima through a challenge of disguise that in which... is very... I mean, I, I, they, they need to f- have... They, there has to be another way they can have fun with each other than just disguise <laughs> competitions, which, by the way, maybe it's disguise other people competitions, which really looks like them stretching their testicles over people. <laughs> well, um, I actually have a hypothesis on why okay. why that is a common thread in all these stories, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, so Yashima Nohage Tanuki took on the appearance of a whole navy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big scrote. Yeah. While Shibaman, which I looks like I misspelt. Shiba woman is what it tries to trans uh, tries to autocorrect it to. Um tells him that he will become you guessed it, the Diamo's procession. <laughs> so, I'm beginning to think that these stories were told to teach people not to mess with Diamo and yeah, the Lords it may because very well be that. <laughs> Because it sounds an awful lot like uh, don't don't fuck with them <laughs> because yep. you're going to get killed. Yeah, it, it, they kill even these spirits. So maybe don't, maybe don't. Um, there was actually uh, so I don't remember the term, but long time ago, one of my friends told me about this this uh, thing that existed in feudal Japan. Um, so when a samurai bought a sword, um, there would be a practice of like killing a random passerby peasant to test the sharpness of the sword. I don't remember what the name of it was, but that kind of goes to show you just how, uh, powerful the higher classes in Japan were during the feudal period. I mean, that being said, uh, same case in European countries as well, but you know it's just different <laughs> so um back to that if i was a peasant in that time i would just kind of sort of give those stores a wide berth oh yeah no 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 you um well being a peasant in any time period is nightmarish yeah like i mean look at look at america right now <laughs> yeah true <laughs> um it, it's <sighs> Man, this is this. I'm I'm not gonna go down this rabbit hole, but <laughs> in any but so the funniest thing to me about that is um, Shimon Tanuki, uh, his wife died from literally the same thing. Yeah. Later, because because this story happens before his wife is killed. If you're following oh, the logical procession, yes. yeah. So, despite knowing that his friend rival whatever is murdered in this case he's still like he's still doing this thing with his wife and it's like dude i i guess this is just the fact that they're like you know kind of stupid like that's that's kind of maybe that's the 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 moral of the story is tanuki are still kind of stupid maybe maybe Um, uh maybe i said the thing wrong uh right then I don't know what you just said. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> uh, uh, the what was it the the Bako uh, Tanuki or whatever? Oh, Baka Tanuki. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fair. Um, in any case, this particular Tanuki appears in Palm Poco, a Ghibli movie about a group of Tanuki in the 1960s dealing with the expansion of cities, featuring Brian Posehn in the dub. I love Brian Posehn. He was my uh, desktop background for a very long time. This creepily really? looking into it. Like, it was a picture of him looking, creepily looking in through a window. So it was just his face, like, creepily staring in. Yeah, that sounds like a desktop background you'd have. Yeah. Anywho. Uh, that's not all about Tanuki, though. It should be noted that while the three famous Tanuki are, are regarded as generally benevolent, prior to the Edo period, Tanuki were frequently more vicious. And what I'm about to tell you is single-handedly my favorite Tanuki story out of them all. I'm excited. Squish it on me. 
Um, <laughs> that that. Uh, so, in one such story, yes, in 1716, mm-hmm. a witch was said to be haunting an old oak tree in a neighborhood in Kyoto. Which, for those of you who don't know, Kyoto is the previous capital of Japan. Uh, at the time of the in the Edo period, it was the capital of Japan. Um, it is said that the witch would leap out from behind the tree and hurl a baby what? at a passerby. <laughs> oh, I like the way this lady rolls. So yeah, let's just start by pointing out the fact that this woman is throwing babies. Where she just ha- she just has a bucket of babies. I'm assuming it's like the crazy cat lady from The Simpsons, but babies, but babies. Um, so several samurai attempted to put a stop to the menace. However, when they attempted to cut the baby, <laughs> wait, wait. they're they're John. They're fruit ninjaing a baby. John, they're yes. fruit ninjaing a baby. <laughs> they're attempting to cut babies in midair. They are attempting to fruit ninja babies. You're correct. Which, uh. That's one of the reasons why I brought up the whole crossroads crossing, because that makes this make more sense in context. Yeah. <laughs> um, it would turn into a stone, ruining the samurai sword in the process. Because for those of you who don't know, uh, katana are not made for uh, cutting. They're made for slashing. Um, and if they're trying to cut into a stone with any sword, it's usually going to be a bad time. The stone baby. So the witch would then laugh and disappear <laughs> after that point. <laughs> like, oh, like, ah, I'm sorry, but I'm on the you. witch's side at this point. I'm kind of on the witch's side, too. <laughs> um, I'm on the witch's side throughout this whole story, to be totally honest with you. <laughs> um, one samurai realized he can just dodge the baby and attack the witch directly. If you can dodge a baby, you can dodge a ball. That's yep. what I always say. <laughs> It, he, he was the first uh, he was the first dodgeball he was the first one to ever be like but what if I moved basically yeah basically <laughs> um, which you would think th- this would be like the first thing that happens in the story not like the last um, although I guess by definition it's like when you look for your keys do you find them in the last place you're looking for them you will only ever find something in the last place you were looking for it. I have looked for stuff after founding stuff. I will say, <laughs> there's, you. It's I've I've I, I've found something before I started to look for it. So, I got a story. Yes. Um, you know I have a large collection of action figures. I'm aware of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know. You know. It's kind of like my main hobby. Um, outside of like some other things, like playing games and you, such. you have less of a um, a collection and more of a museum. I, that's slightly fair, um, <laughs> especially considering the fact that I have like archival quality bags to store things in. Um, so when I moved to my house, um, I. As a young child, yes. I had an Alpha 5 figure. Um, I had it in my collection, and I deliberately hunted it down at one point because I love Alpha 5 because he's such a great character. Um, and I had placed it somewhere so I wouldn't forget it. Oh, uh, that happens to me. You put it somewhere different intentionally to not forget where it is and then by the very nature of you moving it from the spot it usually is you just made your i do that frequently yeah so what i had done is i had placed it on my transformer shelf close to my computer so i could see it however i had acquired more transformers in the intermin of me placing it there and uh me needing to move um, so I was looking for it because I wanted to make sure I knew where it was. And I had like a panic attack because for days I couldn't find it. It was only until I had put that section of Transformers away in preparation for moving that I found it. And I'm like, wow, I'm a dumbass. <laughs> 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 that has nothing to do with an, a samurai cutting a baby, but everything to do 
with the samurai who succeeded being the last one. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the samurai realized he could dodge the baby and attack the witch directly, which resulted in both the witch and the baby disappearing. When daylight came, the samurai found a trail of blood leading to a dead tanuki. Problem oh. solved. The samurai went about his life only to be met with an unfortunate end while retreating and tripping over a fence. Wait. He, and? While wait, wait, while wait, wait. How tall is this fence? Is it a giant samurai? I don't know. He was like, he was like, well, no, I think he was like climbing over the fence. He tripped and uh, he got cut down basically. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So it was said that the spirit of the Tanuki had possessed the fence and none dared touch it after that. Uh, it's a haunted fence. That's the worst yeah. kind of fence. You know what? That actually makes it the single most effective fence. Oh, no, it does. It's the perfect fence. It is. Honestly, haunt a haunted fence is what you want. Like, oh, my God. I'm now imagining, I'm now imagining a business in which someone's like deliberately making wood haunted and then producing fences using <laughs> it's it. It's fantastic. Like... Like, like placing wood in just places of human suffering and what have you. Like, there, there's a they, they 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 dry the wood in a morgue and the everyone's like, why are you drying in the morgue? Got to get the ghosts in there. <laughs> <laughs> Put it in a prison. Got to get that negative energy sapped into that wood. They're not curing it for the sake of uh, not having it warp. They're curing it for the sake of. Uh, it's just uh, soaked having, in blood. Yeah, just blood-soaked wood. Um, it's barn doors aren't... They're haunted. The, it's not red paint. Yeah. Oh, no, that's how you keep the animals in. Yes. Animals can work doors. I mean, a horse can break through a barn door if it wants to. Oh, yeah. If it really... If a horse wants to, a horse can get out of any situation. Mm, can a horse Most get out of being mugged? A horse get out of being mugged. Yeah. Um, I'd be impressed if you mugged a horse, because where are their pockets? That's true. How do they wear pants, Brandon? Back, back legs only. Back legs only. Back legs only. Not all. I mean, none we're of going. The, none of this lower half of all four legs bullshit. <laughs> I want to put this final. This is my stance on how do quadrupeds wear pants. It's the hind legs only, you fucking heathen. <laughs> 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 okay <laughs> so we're going anthro on this one yeah so in another story a tanuki kills a man's wife dons a disguise of her and prepares a stew with her body as the main gre- ingredient holy shit oh they don't fuck around oh uh, yeah no the, she uh it's a cartman situation <laughs> oh. um, uh, yeah uh the tanuki then gives this meal to the husband while disguised, only revealing the nature of its disguise and the stew after the man had already consumed it. He did go full Cartman. You're not wrong. He he went full Cartman. Um, there are a lot of such stories, and for the interested, I highly recommend dipping into this well, as many of them are actually pretty phenomenal. Uh, but here's the thing, Brandon. There's something very important we have to talk about. What And what's that? The health of the Tanuki's testicles. The wait, the health of the testicles? Just, just the testicles in general, the scrotum. There's, we got to talk about that scrot. Yes. So, I'm not gonna lie. I like your caption. I definitely, yeah, no, it's that's a that's a that's a that's a caption for our uh, our our Patreon supporters. I like that picture um, too. Is that? What is that? I want that as a mug. Can can we make so some, that, can we get some mugs well, of that? So that's a Tanuki statue. They're pretty common. Um, like, I think you can probably get some, get one at Mitsuwa. Really? I think I think so. That would be pretty fun. So it, it's a statue of a a Tanuki who who's a little overweight, has some sake, I imagine, in, in a gourd in one hand. But to stay on the uh, South think, Park thread, the balls are like when Stan leaves his. Does he microwave them? They, they, he, he microwaves he, them. Yeah, he no, microwaves no, his, Stan's them. dad microwaves his, his testicles to get uh, weed. Yeah. 
That's so the it whole looks thing. like Stan's testicles from that episode. Stan's on a, dad. On a Tanuki um, that is in the same physical health as Cartman. <laughs> it's the general image of the Tanuki. Um, so I'm not going to lie. I definitely buried the lead on the Tanuki in this episode. I mentioned it in passing a few times. They may be tricksters. They may be buffoons with the occasional heart of gold. But let's be real. That's not why we're here. We're here, we're here for, for that the scrotum. scrotum. That's what we're here for. And according to one source, Brandon, the scrotum of Tanuki was said to be eight to Tommy Matt's, which is 130 wow. square feet. Or 12 meters squared. Wow. That's impressive. Oh. Yes. I want to be reincarnated as a Tanuki. Abake Tanuki. Abake Tanuki. Yes. Um, it's said that the scrotum was the source of the p- Tanuki's power of disguise and linked to the Tanuki's good fortune. Because, Brandon, here's the thing. Yeah. Tanuki skin. Yeah. Like actual Tanuki skin was used to make gold leaf. Because you could you could use the gold leaf, the, the, the Tanuki skin, because it was so tough to hammer the gold thinner. Wow. Yes. That's amazing. And a ball of gold at the time sounded similar to, like, the the word for it yeah. in Japan sounded similar to the Japanese slang for testicles. That's, I love everything about this. These are the best facts ever. I Brandon, like this. That is why the Tanuki has testicles that size. Because it was said that you could turn a ball of gold into eight tatami mats with tanuki skin that's amazing it's it's like a mimetic mutation of a word it's wordplay that's why the tanuki has huge testicles that's pretty uh, actually that's that's one very interesting and also amazing yes um so interestingly as i said before tanuki were never sexualized in their their tails despite their impressive endowment in fact, the penis was even normal sized. And there's a sentence that I never thought I'd write <laughs> in my life. Listen, they, they they were never sexualized, but before we were recording I made a bowl of um uh lazy lazy chili, which is when you just heat up a can of beans and just throw in fistfuls of ground meat. But I mm-hmm. just put some very, very hot hot sauce on it. And yep. um Whenever I eat too much hot sauce, I have weird dreams. I'm going to make sure I go to bed thinking about them t- tanuki uh, testicles to see how weird we can get this. So, nah, I'm not going to bring it up. I had, like, a horrifying dream where I, like, actually woke up screaming, which never <laughs> happens to me. Um, <laughs> That's pretty but amazing. It, it wasn't it wasn't funny horrifying. It was, like, legitimately scary. Yeah. Um. In my dream, so uh, for whatever reason, I was in a hotel. I don't remember why whatsoever. I think there was, like, some kind of casino night thing, like a uh, uh, one of those things where somebody runs a casino night for a charity or something Okay. in a hotel. And I'd gone up to a hotel room. I was going to the bathroom, and all of a sudden, my, my sense of awareness of my surroundings became both uh, blurred and... And hyper, like hyper realized. So like simultaneously, I was like super alert, and I like I was like in a fog. Which yeah. Is a so weird so like thing to describe. You're, you're in your dream. You would be hyper aware and very able to pick up that something is off or about to happen. But at the same time, you have the inability to, with detail, tell what that thing actually is that you're picking up on. Well, it was like it was like uh it was like I was drunk. Kind of okay. where like my senses were were dulled, but at the same time they were enhanced. Yeah, it was very weird. Um, but anyways, I leave the bathroom and then I'm like, "Oh fuck, that thing's here," and that thing is an incorporeal like shadow person that haunts my dreams, <laughs> which I never <laughs> talked about on this podcast. Um, but it's basically like a uh, usually it's a void in my dreams where yeah. it's like kind of like a dementor honestly i think dementors are the reason why i have this shadow person as my nightmare because it literally looks exactly like a dementor oh nice um i realized that it was in the closet like you know how a hotel rooms usually has a, clo- yeah, have a closet yeah, yeah. by the door i realized it was in the closet so i'm holding it shut and i'm like i gotta get out of here i'm like well no it's 
I think I realize, oh, this is just a dream. I can I should just look at it and it take the power away from it. I looked at it and it looked more realistic than it ever has. In my- <laughs> it was like, oh, that's fantastic. It like felt legitimately real, and my brain was just like, fuck. And I woke up screaming because of it. That's pretty great. I only mentioned that because you brought up dreams and I usually don't remember my dreams but I, it was weird yeah it was you weird. Had like a, I, I a weird know. like dream flashback I don't think this has happened for a while but when I was little I used to have night terrors which is like when you have, you have a bad dream but your body doesn't release that chemical that makes your that body shuts it down yeah not move when you're moving in your dream so that I was like um there was I think twice uh like I woke it up in the morning and then Eric has been like, yeah, so what the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> when, uh, oh, oh, uh, man, this is, this is great podcasting. Cause the, everyone's favorite thing is when people talk about their dreams. Yeah. I wasn't talking about my dream. Well, year, one yours was amazing. And two, I was t- wasn't talking about dreaming. I was talking about having a bad dream. But, like, my body was act, and I was just, I guess, just, like, yelling and, like, flicking my legs around. Well, when I was a kid, um, there's a story. Uh, I was in bed with someone, like, a, like, a, like I was a kid, so I was sleeping in bed with, like, a parent or something like that, or an yeah. aunt. I, I think it was my uncle I was sleeping in bed with, because it, it was just, like, I, I was very nervous, and I needed, like... Like, I was very young, too. Yeah. So I was nervous, young, and I needed to, like, be around someone. Yeah. Because my anxiety is terrible. Um, <laughs> if you haven't if you haven't listened to many episodes of this podcast, go back. You'll see. There's a lot of evidence <laughs> uh, of my anxiety. Um, so I sat up in the middle of the night one time and said, I want to be a Pokemon master, and then sat back down. <laughs> That's so fucking good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, I wanted to be a Pokemon master too, though. Yeah. Anywho, um, so due to their jovial nature. <laughs> Let's get nature, back to this raccoon nuts. <laughs> we got to get back to the raccoon. The, well, raccoon dog nuts. Raccoon not dog raccoons. nuts. Yeah. So due to their jovial nature in association with luck, Tanuki statues, balls and all, have become a popular sight in front of Japanese restaurants. Um, I don't really have much else to say here, uh, but uh, here's some traditional Japanese art displaying I, Tanuki I testicles. I really want a Tanuki statue right now. Yeah. Um, so Tanuki, I, I should note that Tanuki statues were used as raincoats, mats, nets, shelters, and so much more. So Brandon, yes. take a journey with me through Tanuki through the ages. Okay, so okay, but just, just as a heads up, you can get a Tanuki statue for $16 on Amazon. And you can actually get the one uh, from your screenshot above or one that's very similar, but they're like $50 for like well, yeah, cause, a reasonable one. Well, but yeah, you're getting a nice, you're probably getting a decent ceramic. I don't want a decent uh, ceramic. I, I just want a vinyl raccoon with big old nuts. I mean, the, 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 fi- the $14 one has the big old nuts. It's yeah. just the way that they're represented is different. There's a Tonuki Japanese raccoon dog ceramic cocktail tiki mug for $12. And this thing is packing. <laughs> oh, no. Um, anywho, I want, Brandon, I, I collected some very particular artwork for you. Um, I want to go through each of these I, images. I, I could see there was a one. picture and I, I've intentionally not been scrolling down. So, okay, let's scroll to the first image. Okay. I like it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, so uh, this is showing off how the Tanuki could use their scrotum to intimidate. Uh, okay. So we yeah. have a group of men with umbrellas who look like they're having... Well, okay, so there's three guys, four guys, three guys. The I, one, think they're, they're, I think they're peddlers. The one on top holding the umbrella looks very happy the guy yep. just below him also looks pretty happy the guy on the bottom in the purple looks like he's this his life is flashing in front of his eyes in a horror while a tanuki <laughs> not this cute fat tanuki from before this jacked <laughs> this jacked angry tanuki 
is wielding his muscular testicles against like yep. he's taking on three guys at once with just some muscular testes. Oh no, he is about to murder the guy in purple with his testicles. He's about to smother him to death. Like there's no question about it. Like he he's there there What's the word for like animals that can control their tail and not just wag them? Oh. Not articulate like he can uh, prehensile. He has a prehensile. pre. Yep. He's got muscular prehensile testicles because these aren't oh. on the ground. These are of their own volition, like aggressively going at like they're stomp, trying to stomp on them, but they're being pushed back. <laughs> I'll say it's a bold strategy to use your testicles as a weapon. Yeah. Um. So moving on uh, to the next one. So they also the tanuki also use their testicles as nets to catch fish. They're very stretchy. Um, mm -hmm. So now we ha have a group of Tanuki. And um, so I th I, th I've done this. I'm pretty sure you've, you've probably done this. It's probably a common school. Uh, as a little kid, that really big, colorful, like, um, sheet. Yeah, where yeah. They, And then everybody lifts it up. And then, like, you go inside of it. Um, it's like a parachute. Yeah, like a big, thing. colorful parachute. So yeah. these Tanuki, um, now I think, see, this is the thing that's hard to tell. Is this one? It has to be one or else it wouldn't work I'm, as a net. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's one of the Tanuki's testes. Yeah, the one of the, so we've got four Tanuki. It took me, I looked at this picture longer than I want to admit, Brandon, All of to them try and figure this out. are stretching one other Tanuki's testicles out so wide, so wide. So wide. To, yeah. to, but there's fish in them, so they're using them to capture fish. They like they submerge, stretch and submerge, see fish mm -hmm. swim on top, and then quick lift, and now they have the fish captured. Yeah. Um, I want to point out that the one Tanuki, he is jabbing, and I'm assuming it's the Tanuki's whose testicles this is. He's the because owner. Because he's not holding on to it. Um, he's jabbing a spear really close to his scrotum. Yeah. Real close. Like, Ill advised, at the yeah. least. At the least. Oh, the next one's pretty good, too. This one I like a lot. <laughs> now, that's what I call... So, you can easily tell who drew the short straw on this road trip. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> so, uh, so, there are uh, one, two, three, four, five Tanuki total in this image. Mm -hmm. It appears that they've all collectively wanted to go on a trip, but there mm -hmm. was a river. So, how do you cross the river? Someone's got to draw straws because we're all getting in somebody's testicles. So it's a a, a testicle canoe of sorts. And yep. just one Tanuki is hands-free pulling four <laughs> other Tanuki upstream. And he's got a pipe, too. Cause, yeah. And I'm assuming that that pipe has more than just uh, tobacco in it because he probably oh, no. needs it. That's an opium pipe for sure. <laughs> There's no doubt. Although I will, I will note that there is one of the one of the Tanuki in his scrotum uh, has a pipe as well. Yeah, one has a pipe. The other pipe. The other has like maybe a heavy package. I don't know what that is. Yeah, no, it's it's a box alarming. Of something. And the best part is Mount Fuji's in the background. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow! You uh, really next... knocked it out of the park on this oh, one. I, I... I found some phenomenal Tanuki photos. The the next one's especially good. That is that supposed <laughs> to be an example to... of shape shifting? So I don't know. I think he's just he's practicing. I think like he's starting <sighs> to learn how to use his testicles to shape shift. So we've got to see a bunch of Tanuki, and then there's one. There's one who's attempting to make his testicles look like a face. But he hasn't done a really good job, so it looks like he made, like, you had a Mr. Potato Head kit, but not the Mr. Potato Head, so you used a real potato. And just well, that's stuck... what the way it used to be in the old days. Yeah, like, you just stuck this shit onto yeah, it... a large <laughs> old potato it, it's, that's vaguely it, face-like. It's a fascinating image. Um, uh, you, you can probably find most of the images we're talking about by just searching Tanuki scrotum. Um you don't have to worry about a safe church because it's just going to show all these wonderful, wonderful Edo wood prints. Yeah. Um, the next one is hilarious. They are. Um, they're working out. So these are like 
pretty in shape Tanuki. There's one. Maybe oh, he, no, they're buff. He's working his legs by carrying his sack, which looks very heavy. And now oh, we yeah. have another guy in the background. He's my favorite, who's doing mm-hmm. leg presses with his own testicles. And Ooh. that's great. And the, are, I don't know if the other two are trainers or if they're taking a break because they might be, like, wiping sweat off their brow. Oh. <laughs> well, the one guy, the one guy... I don't know the one guy. There's there's one Tanuki in green who's got his hand like off to the side, and I don't know. He's just like I, there's something about the way that they're they're posing that's just like uh, I, th- I think they're in the act of wiping sweat off their brow. I think I think you're right. I think they're I think they're they're like taking a break. But now, now if I ever get a traditional um, Japanese style tattoo, I think I know. What you're going to get? Yeah, because everyone everyone knows like the koi fish and the waves and the and, and what have you, but there I've not seen any just testicle tanukis. Well, that's because most people don't want to have tanuki testicles on their body. Uh, yeah, most. I, mo- most. I'm gonna say most. Yeah, I kind of do. <laughs> Um, I have one final picture, Brandon. It's from a movie. Uh, it's from Pom Poco. And uh, it's the most novel use of the testicles of all of the Tanuki photos I've seen. Um, they're being used as parachutes. Yes, they're being used as parachutes. Which, now, when I think Tanuki suit Mario, can he glide? Uh, yes, he can glide and... I'm actually literally right about to talk about that. So, so let's go into is pop that culture. Nintendo actually showing scrotum in a video game? No, 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 they don't. The Tanuki suit does not have scrotum. I'll say that. Um, so Japan is a cultural juggernaut. Um, literally, uh, I don't think it's, I, I honestly don't think it's inaccurate to say that culture is their number one export at this point. Um, and as you may uh, know, if you've listened to this podcast, I am a truly colossal weeb. Uh, so you better believe I'm going to be talking about the, you the pop are. I, I was, I'm sorry. I, I in my head was picturing Tanuki uh, suit Mario, but when I was thinking testicles, I was actually thinking flying squirrel Mario. I was conflating those two. So I, in my head, I thought he was like ah. stretching. It was him like actually stretching. No, no, his, no. Yeah, yeah, flying squirrel Mario is a separate one. That's from New Super Mario U, I want to say, or something like that. New Super Mario Brothers. Oh, and I was also thinking of like the uh, the where he stretches a sheet out too. Oh, that's in that's in Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, but that's, that's not Tanuki suit. Yeah, Tanuki suit. The Tanuki suit didn't appear in that one. Tanuki suit appeared in Super Mario Brothers three. Um, so, which getting into it, uh, and because this is the one that you remembered. I'm going to say that perhaps the most well influence on well known influence on modern culture is Mario's Tanuki suit, um, which was first made available in Super Mario Brothers three. So if you ever wondered why he could turn to a statue and use the leaf as a power up, it's because of the Tanuki's ability to shape shift. And there's actually a specific story in which the Tanuki turned to a statue. Um, I think that it was actually mistranslated as raccoon suit in the U S but I could be wrong. Uh, initially I, th- I wouldn't I, think, I wouldn't doubt that that doesn't sound like, wrong it, it, uh, if you just told yeah. me that I think I remember that but I don't know if there's the thing where like I actually remember it or if it just makes enough sense where I go oh yeah I remember that and it, it, it yeah I, I'm in, well, implanting a memory I don't know it, it's it's one of those like Mandela effect type memories where you human memory is fallible um, so I don't remember if it was translated as the Tanuki suit always, because I, I have this vague recollection of it being translated as the raccoon suit instead of the Tanuki suit. But uh, every source I looked at, it's tra- it's the Tanuki suit. So it might be A, that it's just been corrected since then, or it might be B, that it was always correctly the Tanuki suit. So who knows? Um, Tom Nook is also a Tanuki in the Nintendo game Animal Crossing. And much of his behavior and tendency to sell items as leaves are lifted directly from Tanuki lore. That's why Tom Nook doesn't charge interest. Ah, see, th- I'm learning this about Animal Crossing, and I like it. I never yeah. questioned it. I just accepted things as were as they were, but I like knowing 
this is, is, is what's going on in the background there. Yeah, no, it's it's deliberate. The reason that you're not charged interest is because uh, Danzaburo Danuki didn't charge interest on his loans. That's literally the reason why Tom Nook doesn't charge interest on his loans. It's pretty great. Um, as mentioned before, uh, the Snooki were also the central characters in the 1994 Studio Ghibli film, Pom Poco, which is actually named for the sound that the Tanuki make when they hit their bellies. Ah, it's I like it. It's the onomatopoeia. Yeah. Pom Poco, Pom Poco, fun. Pom Poco. Yeah. Um, perhaps my favorite Tanuki fact, however, is that in Beast Wars Neo, there was a Tanuki character, Heinrad, whose transformation resulted in him having a pair of testicles. <laughs> and before asking, I have one, and I love him. He's literally right behind me. He doesn't have his sake and parchment uh, things because I don't want my cat to steal them on me. Uh, so they're in storage. But he's great. And I also want to note that the testicles are not essential to the transformation. <laughs> <laughs> they don't need them whatsoever because his legs... Uh, are formed from his back and his arms are his tanuki arms. So <laughs> they literally added testicles for no good reason. Because <laughs> like if you look at if you look at the image, Brandon, yeah, um, the testicles are these like little uh, waist pads on his side. Oh, they're not. Yeah. They're not a part of any any crucial element. They literally could remove the testicles and th- there would be no problem. But they it's a tanuki. Added they added testicles to a Transformers figure to make it more accurate to Tanuki. Also, um, for those of you who don't know, Heinrad is a time travel, uh, time based character. So he has like manipulation of time abilities. So the toy for him uh, has a functioning alarm clock. That's fantastic. That's fun. I don't. I personally don't use it as a functioning alarm clock, uh, mainly because I don't want the batteries decaying inside of him. Because. Um, I was curious, and I was looking to see if I could buy how much it would cost to buy a new Heinrad. You can't find him anymore. Oh <laughs> on no! <eBay. laughs> no, um, the only instance I could find of him was like a hundred and thirty dollars. Oh, so he's kind of become a rarity. Uh, but I love him. There's a Malifaux third edition Tanuki. There is. Yep. Wait. Uh yes 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 there's it's um I think it's Ten Thunders, it's Tanuki Trichi Ten Thunders versatile yeah. yeah 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 um so yeah the 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 Tanuki so Ten Thunders is the um if if uh what's her name um Kirai was made later in the the lifespan of uh, Malfo she probably would have been a Ten Thunders character. Uh, but she got assigned to Resurrectionists. Okay. Because uh, Ten Thunders is basically East Asia, the faction. I really want to play Malfo, like, really, really, really bad. But uh, it's super difficult now yeah. for obvious reasons. Oh, we will play once. Um... One day we'll play. Yeah. I, I We've been trying to play for about a decade now, I think. Yeah. I mean, we we have the gear. Yeah. Um. And there's one more thing, Brandon. Yes. The reason why I did this episode is because Studio Trigger uh, made an anime called Brand a New Animal, which prominently features uh, a Tanuki girl named Michiru as she attempts to unravel a mystery uh, around surrounding why she was turned into a Tanuki girl. And it's it's basically an anime filled with anthro characters. So it's super furry. And I love it. It's my favorite yeah, I, show I believe on it. No, the I, air right I, now. I never thought about this before, but because the nature of Tanuki is their testicles, they all have to be male. So if she got turned into a Tanuki... No. No. Only, only male Tanukis have the testicles. It, 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 it's weird. Can a female... Wait, are there female Tanuki, but they can't shapeshift? No, they can, because we know for a fact that there are female Tanuki because of Shibamon Tanuki. Yeah, he has a wife, and she could shapeshift. Yes. And she could shapeshift, and that's part of why she died. But how do female um, Tanuki shapeshift if for the male, a large part is with the, the scrotum? I'm going to tell you the answer, Brandon. It's folklore. 
Oh. <laughs> oh yeah. Um but yeah, yeah. Uh honestly, uh Brand New Animal is probably so if you don't know Studio Trigger, Studio Trigger is a is basically the studio that came out of Ganex. Um, they're the people who did Neon Genesis Evangelion, uh, Tengatapa Gurren Lagann. Um, oh, I like that. Uh, Pandy and Socking with Knee Socks. Um, basically, the DNA that made Ganex what it was became Studio Trigger. Um, the first anime that they did was Kill a Kill, which was also good honestly honestly one of my favorite anime um and uh then they made a few that i didn't really like and now they've made a uh, brand new animal and i love it it's so viscerally animated um and i'm not gonna lie uh so at the beginning of the story the character really wants to turn back into be a human and i'm just kind of like i don't know i think it'd be kind of cool to just be a tanuki person <laughs> I think it'd be cooler than being human because you're you're their their like abilities are all augmented because they're like animals. Oh yeah, that that would be fun too. Uh, yeah. Also, um, because she's a because of her specific set of circumstances, she has this is slight spoilers, but not really because it's in the opening. Um, she has the ability to shape shift into like other types of species, okay. so she can like get the legs of a cheetah or. Yeah turn into like grow wings or something along those lines that's not a spoiler because it's literally in the opening so um but yeah it's it's a cool concept really cool show really fun show and 100 percent the reason why i did an episode on tanuki this week because when i was thinking about what i wanted to do my next episode on i had just started watching brand new animal and i was like i'm gonna do it i'm tanuki nice i'm happy you did tanuki yeah Honestly, uh, one of my favorite stories I've told for this podcast, without a doubt. Um, really super interesting lore, really fun uh, folklore storytelling. Um, I really want to do more yokai stuff, but yokai is very difficult to do for the podcast um, yeah. because usually I like to have I like to have more sources that I can verify, um, and I don't like to say things without being able, like able to like read the original article or something like that. Um, but it's just such a compelling and interesting, um, it is a bit of folklore. It gave me an idea for, to write another copy about something that I've always been like, oh, Tanuki Mario, what I know is never like, but why? So I think I might do a little, uh, poking around on some tangential stuff on this. All right. That sounds good to me. Um, just don't, don't poke around on Kitsune because that's, definitely an episode that's oh, coming nope, out of me. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's all I got for this week's episode. So uh, as always, our website is CryptopediaCast.com. Our Instagram is at CryptopediaCast. Twitter is at CryptopediaCast. Email is CryptopediaCast at gmail.com or us at CryptopediaCast.com. Uh, we do have a Patreon. It's There's a link in the show notes. Um, and uh, every week we thank our Jackalope level sponsors uh because that's one of their perks so brandon i think it's your turn to go through the list all right we'll do it we're gonna start with the og mr clay and clary has been around for um a very long time and then we also have marty of the party marty von party he's the uh the 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 party animal who has to stay away from bird schneider on account of his rare bone condition hollowest of bones um, that's true uh, that that's really just it. Just it's it was unfortunate. He fell into a vat of uh, pudding, and that, as everyone knows, see, uh, draws the marrow out of your bones. It was a very, very unfortunate thing. And the very here here though here's the secret. Here's the surprise. We've got a fourth one. You know what? There's a uh, Jonathan Shepard, not an actual dog, but also not related to that video game character from that uh, series that I pirated, and then they put out a real one, and it linked my old account, and, and it was, let me just continue Wait, the story. Mass Effect? Yeah, Mass you Effect. You pirated Mass Effect? I pirated Mass Effect, and then... One? Yeah, and then Mass Effect 2 came out, and I got it legitimately, but I still had Mass Effect, my old Mass Effect 1 account, and it let me bring all my stuff over. 
It probably is because of the save file. Yeah. Because it probably scanned for the save file and pulled that. Because yeah. if you pirated it, all you're doing is... So, one, first of all, stop stop saying when you've broken the law on the podcast. Um, second of all, <laughs> uh, uh, piracy is literally just breaking the um, DRM encryption. So, it's the same game. It's just oh. you, you, you remove the DRM check. That's all. Oh. Okay, you're just you're just lucky you were able to actually play the full game because sometimes when you take out the DRM on those types of games, it totally like, it, like scuttles it, it, it. Breaks them, or you can only play like yeah. the first part of level one or whatever. Uh, um, yeah, po- Pokemon did a weird thing with their game um, where it actually, if you use like action replay or something, it gets slower and some of the characters become more hostile towards you. That's funny. I like the the stories about how different companies do fun ways to uh Oh it's like there's some like they make the game like slowly get harder or harder or some like you just can't beat the game. Um my favorite is Mother is Earthbound. So in Earthbound, um you can play the full game if you're playing on a ROM copy of it, like a, a original like knockoff, like one of the old school ones. Until the very end. At which point you can't beat the final boss, and it's an RPG, so it's like you know 30, 40 hours of your life has gone into this game, and when you die, all of your saves are erased. That's amazing. I like that. Yeah, there, there's some really, really good uh, DR on, uh, like there's some really funny uh, like anti piracy measures. Yeah, uh, SNES was was uh, SNES had some really good anti piracy things. Um. Uh, what else? There was there was one really funny one. Oh, uh, Donkey Kong Country had a really good one too. Um, I think. I think it was. Mm, damn it! I can't remember now. Uh. Whatever. Um. Anywho. Uh, if you have if you if you enjoyed the podcast uh be sure to rate review subscribe uh if you have any monster requests or stories be sure to send them in i've got a backlog of requests right now that i'll eventually get to one of these days yep oh it's my turn isn't it (laughs) a little bit yeah no I, i was uh looking to see if there was enough material on the other thing that i won't tell you about until later uh, Fair. If the, 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 what the things in the stuff, um, you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast dot com, and my Twitter is at crypto brandon. Um, I'm Instagram at mu twenty fifty seven. My Twitter is at jf dunham. My website is john games dot com, and my email is john at cryptopediacast dot com. And our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. Oh, oh that's how we, we know it's the end, end of the episode. show. We know it's the end of the show. I'm yawning. <laughs> um, as always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird.